Hey friends! Happy National Park Week! I'm going to share with you one of my favorite books set in national parks. Um, actually in the oldest national park, Yellowstone. It's called The Wolves Are Back and it was written by Jean Craighead George. Um, all the paintings were done by Wendell Miner and it was published by Dutton's Children's Books, which is part of the Penguin Young Readers Group. So we're going to dive on in. <laughs> The wolf pup pricked up his ears, pattered out of the den, and followed his father down the slope. They jogged through the lush grasses to the bank of the Lamar River in Yellowstone National Park. There they came upon the carcass of an elk. Their pack had felled. The wolves were back. The pup watched his father eat. Then he too tore off a bite. Two ravens stuffed themselves. A golden eagle carried off food for her eaglets. A grizzly bear sat nearby waiting for the wolves to leave so he could eat in peace. Three magpies snatched quick bites. Mice chewed on calcium-filled antlers. Two sexton beetles buried a piece of meat to eat later. The valley was sharing food again. The wolves were back. Where had they been? Shot. Every one. Many years ago, the director of the national parks decided that only gentle animals should grace the beautiful wilderness. Rangers, hunters, and ranchers were told to shoot every wolf they saw. They did. By 1926, there were no more wolves in the 48 states. No voices howled. The thrilling chorus of the wilderness was silenced. The wolves were gone. The deer, elk, antelope, the gentle animals, looked beautiful in photographs. They wandered in tranquil herds. Peace reigned in the American wilderness. The wolves were gone. Time passed. Visitors to wild America yearned to hear wolves. When they learned that no wolf had ever attacked a person in North America, they urged that the wolves be returned to their home. In 1995, 10 adult wolves were brought down from Canada and set free in Yellowstone National Park. They dug dens and bore puppies. First, there were three packs, then there were five. In six years, there were 21 packs. They howled and sang to each other. Hikers stopped and marveled at the sound. The wolves were back. The pup, who had followed his father to eat, heard a vesper sparrow sing. This songster had not been in the Lamar Valley for almost a century. The vast elk herds had eaten the grasses the little bird needed for food and nesting material. When the wolves returned, they frightened the elk up into the mountains. The grasses grew tall. The sparrows raised babies and sang. The wolves were back. The wolf pup heard a flycatcher call. The Lamar Valley had not heard this flycatcher while the bison were there. The bison break and trample young trees to keep back the forest so there will be grass. Now the wolves hunted the bison and drove them back from the river. Without the bison, the aspens grew. With the trees restored, there were limbs for the flycatcher to perch on. They sat there and sang, the wolves were back. When grasp and aspen were deep along the riverbanks, erosion stopped, willows grew, beavers arrived and felled the willows, ate the bark and made dams with the logs. The dams formed ponds. Water birds, fish and frogs flocked to the ponds. Dragonflies zoomed above them. The pup peered ahead. In front of him sat one of the few coyotes the wolves had not killed when they first arrived in the valley. After the wolves thinned out the coyotes, the number of ground squirrels that the coyotes fed upon increased. Ground squirrels were the badger's main food. Badgers moved back into the valley, now rich with ground squirrels. 
The badgers ate well and dug tunnels for homes. The wolves were back. The grizzly bears shared the wolf's kills and had two and even three big, fat, healthy cubs. The wolf pup with his father ate until his stomach was round and then followed his father back to their den. They walked through gardens of wildflowers. The wolves had scared the mountain sheep that chew the flowers to the ground up into the rocky cliffs. Flowers filled the valley. Bees and butterflies that fed on the flowers returned. Warblers sang. Hummingbirds brightened the valley. Like pieces in a kaleidoscope, the broken parts of the wilderness were tumbling into place. Say it with me. The wolves were back. The pup grew up. He was taught to hunt by his father and mother. He helped take care of the next litter of puppies. Then he left home. The young male went south where he met a mate from Yellowstone Delta Pack. They trotted side by side into the Teton wilderness and dug a den along the Snake River. They scared the elk away. They scattered the bison. They frightened the sheep up into the cliffs. The grasses grew tall. The riverbank stopped eroding. Willow and aspen trees flourished. Beavers built ponds. Birds sang. Flowers bloomed. The wilderness is in balance again. The wolves are back. Thank you all for sharing this awesome book with me. If you want another one just like it, you can check out Jean Craighead George's book, The Buffalo Are Back. Um, it's also a really great read and follows kind of the similar pattern and talks about the buffalo or bison in the Yellowstone area as well. If you want other Jean Craighead George books, I would recommend checking out some of her novels. She's got some great novels also about nature and wild animals and all sorts of fun topics like that. Have an awesome day. Happy National Park Week and hashtag find your park. Bye.